Welcome to the distributive property. Today I want to show you how to simplify expressions by using a distributive property. Now the distributive property can be very simply uh, summed up as a times b plus c is equivalent to ab plus ac, meaning a times uh, anything inside parentheses is going to equal the product of that number a times the elements inside the inside the parentheses. So let's take a look at a couple things I want to review with you before we actually get into some examples. So if I multiply by a number three times x, remember what that simply states is I'm really saying three x's, meaning x plus x plus x. Now, now if we create parentheses, the reason why we create parentheses is let's say I have a number that I can't simplify. Let's say x plus y. So I'm going to put that times parentheses. So really the product of three of that is x plus y plus x plus y plus x plus y. Well, if I kind of simplified this, I would get three x's plus three y's. So what we've noticed is by using the distributive property, we don't have to go through all that kind of stuff. What we, know, what we can do is if we simply multiply the three times the x, we get three x, and the three times the y, we'll get three y's. So you can see all this work I did. We're going to just do distributive property, right? Okay. Um, the next thing we need to look at is let's take a look at some real numbers, right? I mean, you can believe me as much as you want to, but does it work for real numbers? Well, first thing I need to have you prove is that 3 is the same thing as 2 plus 1, all right? So as long as you guys can agree that 3 is the same as 2 plus 1, I'm going to multiply 4 times 3, and I'm going to multiply 4 times 2 plus 1. We said they're equal, so it's okay. Well, multiply 4 times 3, that's just a number times a number. We're going to get 12. However, since I rewrote 2 plus 1, what I'm going to have to do is use the distributive property. Now, obviously, if you're simplifying a problem, you could you know, just add those together and multiply. But for, our, for my case here, if I use distributive property, I have 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 4 times 1, 4 times 1 which is 4. Therefore, what we notice is 8 plus 4, we know is going to equal 12. So the distributive property works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some examples now with you, and then I'm going to leave some examples over to you for you to practice, me to show you kind of some tips, and then I'll come back and we'll check your work. So the first example I'd like to go over is if I have 4x, 4x times 2x plus y. Now, when... When you're multiplying a number outside parentheses here, I just had this one number, right? And you distribute it through. Well, when you're given kind of a term here where you're going to have two different elements, you need to make sure that you multiply both of them across. So when I multiply 4x times 2x, I need to make sure that I multiply my coefficients. So it would be 4 times 2, which is 8. And then I multiply x times x, which is going to give me x squared. Then I multiply 4x times y. So 4x times y is going to leave me with 4xy. I can't simplify that anymore. All right, problem number two. For this one, I have a negative 3. And now I have three different terms in here. Well, to multiply, just like when it was two terms, distributive property is going to tell you you have to multiply your outside term by everything inside your parentheses. So a lot of times what we like to just write is these little arrows. So I'm going to multiply this outside number to every single term inside. So therefore I have negative 3 times 3a squared. I multiply the negative 3 only by the number. So therefore I get a negative 9a squared. And I'm not really multiplying only by the number, but you know, we know that 3 times a variable is just you know, 3 the variable, right? 3x is 3x. So I can multiply these two numbers to get negative 9ab. Negative 3 times a negative a is now going to give me a positive 3a. And negative 3 times 7 is going to give me a negative 21. Now, whew, I'm just building it up, aren't I, for you? So now we have three terms on the outside, plus we have three terms on the inside. Again, if we can just stick with our rule, we take whatever is on outside of our parentheses and just multiply to every term inside. So this one I'm actually going to uh, break up for you. I'm going to say we need to multiply 2xy times x squared. So I'll write 2xy times xy plus 2xy, oh, I don't know where the square came from, 2xy times my next term, a negative 3xy. Let's put these in parentheses. 
plus 2xy times a 4y. Now, the reason why I did this is just to kind of show you a different way of doing the distributive property. Um, these were fairly simple, and you know I can kind of do these in my head. However, it might be helpful for you to write out actually the multiplication of the problem so you can see what you're multiplying uh, each number by. So 2xy times x squared, 2xy times negative 3xy, and the 2xy plus 4x. Now, I knew it was going to be positive. I don't know if the final answer is going to be positive or negative, but I knew this was positive because this is a positive 2xy. So that's why I kept on saying plus. So when I multiply 2xy times x squared, I can multiply x times x squared, add the exponents, so I get 2x cubed y. Here, instead of writing the plus, notice I'm going to multiply a 2 times a negative 3. That's going to give me a negative 6. So this term is actually going to be negative. x times x is x squared. y times y is y squared. Um, and then over here, again, I'm going to be multiplying two positive numbers. So I have 2 times 4, which is 8. And then x times nothing, right? So x is just going to be there still. And then y times y is y squared. So that's how you uh, work out that problem. And lastly, we have a fraction. <sighs> Always got to add in a fraction, right? Well, there's a couple ways you guys could do this. Um, you know, one thing is... We know that uh, you know, a property, if I say you know, 3 times 4 is the same thing as you know, 4 times 3, right? So I could, uh, I could multiply this just by 6, and it's not going to change my problem at all. Um, however, you could also just say, you know what, let's just distribute it through and see what we get. So x over 6 times x squared, just because I want to see you guys what it looks like, that becomes x times x squared, right? These are all over 1. These don't have um, a denominator that we can see, so we put them over 1. So x times x squared is x cubed over 6. Plus x times x is x squared, so it's going to be plus 5x squared over 6. And then x times minus 9 will be a negative 9x over 6. So then if you want to do, uh, you know, do, you can do a couple problems. You can like factor out the 1, 6 if you don't like the fractions. Third plus 5x squared minus 9x. You know, there's a lot of different things you could do to go and simplify the problem. And, but that's pretty much the basics of using your distributive property. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase these problems. I'm going to put some problems up there on the board that I want you to solve. And then I'm going to come back and see how you guys do. Okay, please go ahead and write down these problems. Give them a shot, see how you do with them. And then I'll come back and I'll show you the answers. Oh, okay, you ready for this? All right, let's see how we do here. Um, a couple things to remember as far as some helpful hints. Um, for the first one, remember we're just going to multiply. All right. It might be helpful, guys, if you don't know what to do, to remember to draw these little lines going to each term. It also might be helpful just to rewrite this as like negative 2y times y squared. Now, before in my previous exam, I did plus. Well, here it's always a negative, so you get a negative. 2y times a negative 3y, and minus 2y times 1. So it might be helpful to write it out. So check your, check your problems and see which one's easiest for you to write it out, or can you simply do it um, by multiplying here. So I'm going to just kind of work through these answers uh, pretty quickly, just see how I do. Um, hopefully, you know, you guys spend some time working them out. So 5y times 3x, I can't combine my y and my x, so it's just going to be 15yx. And then 5y times negative 2 is a negative 10y. Over here, I have negative 2 times y squared. Negative 2y times y squared is a negative 2y cubed. 
Negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6 times y times y, which is y squared. And then negative 2 times y times 1 is going to be a negative 2y. All right. Here, I'm just going to do the same thing, but just the other way. So remember, when you have here, you multiply 4 times your coefficient times your coefficient. So I have 4. A times A squared is A cubed. B, I don't have anything to multiply B by, so I can put a 1 there. So just be B. 4 times negative 6 is a negative 24. A times A is A squared. B times B is B squared. Lastly, 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. A times, I don't have there, so it could be A to the 0, which would be 1. So I'm just going to write my A. And then B times B squared is B cubed. Lastly, again, it's the same thing. Just distribute your uh, 1 fourth. These all do not have denominators, so I can make them as a denominator of 1. So you multiply your numerator times your numerator, your denominator times your denominator. So you obtain 7x squared over 4 minus 4x over 7 plus 8 over 7. Where did I get 7? How about our denominator was 4, right? Sorry about that. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is how you use distributive property. I hope this process helped. I hope you got your answers right. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, let me know. But that's your distributive property for you.